guided tour is going to visit today one place where life goes on just as it did 200 years ago, before the white man tamed the American wilderness. In the Great Smokies Mountains of North Carolina, where U.S. highways 441 and 19 intersect at the village of Cherokee, Okanalufti Indian Village is maintained by the Cherokee Historical Association. Visitors stop first at an information hut before going on to the village, the Museum of the Cherokee Indian, or the nightly performance of Unto These Hills, an historical drama. Here in Okanalufti, tourists may hear and see the story of the Cherokee as it was lived in 1750. Indian guides direct visitors through the village, leading them backward in time over ground where nomadic tribes camped 5,000 years ago. Everything in the village is authentic, including the hand-hewn log and clay cabins in which the Indians live. Visitors making the tour in small groups are invited to inspect cabin furnishings and trappings the Cherokee used two centuries ago. Clad in costumes like those their ancestors wore in the 16th century, inhabitants of the Cherokee village expertly demonstrate all arts and crafts. Weapons making in which the Cherokees excelled is explained here to a group of visitors by an Indian maid. Two hundred years ago, the Cherokee were using tools they received in trade from European explorers to hollow canoes from solid tree trunks. This canoe maker has lined a log with clay to control the fire which helps to shape his craft. A primitive axe is used to chop the charred wood out of the trunk. One of the main occupations for tribal women, then as now, is grinding maize in a large wooden mortar. Okanalofti Indian Village is the only place in the world where visitors can see the weaving of old Cherokee baskets. Another craft, highly developed by the Cherokee, is the making of domestic utensils of all descriptions out of clay. A Cherokee brave skill with blow gun and darts makes an exciting interlude for visitors. The Indians' uncanny accuracy gave a guided tour cameraman courage enough to take part in a hair-raising demonstration. That arrow went between the gourd and the cameraman's head, but the next is right on target. The penetrating power of the darts, which were dipped in poison by Cherokee hunters and warriors of other days, can be clearly seen. To further perpetuate the history and traditions of the Cherokee Indians, the Cherokee Historical Association presents a full-length drama on two of these hills every night except Monday from June 25th through September 5th. A full dress rehearsal is about to underway in Mammoth Mountainside Theater, an outdoor amphitheater which seats 2,900 spectators in comfortable individual sport chairs. Fearsome war paint is applied by makeup experts to the principal performer in the spectacular Eagle Dance, an important production number in the drama, written by Kermit Hunter and directed by Harry Davis. The production is acted in by seasoned thespians as well as full-blooded Cherokee. The cast is beginning to assemble, and last-minute touches are applied to ensure authenticity to the very smallest detail. Finally, all are ready to commence, and so the drama begins. In the beginning was peace, the peace of common brotherhood, common worship, common labor. The land was friendly and bountiful, far up where velvet sunlight poured through the cold ravines of the Okanalufti River, where soft winds made the yellow corn tassel blow through the lazy midsummer, lived the great spirit, that divine force which stirred the hearts of all men and which led them to express, in primitive ecstasy, their deep kinship with eternal God.
during the opening dance, an narrator speaks. The black bear and the gray foxes know the earth is wide. My brother the fox spoke and said, now is the time of sun and the green corn. Behold and see the wideness of the earth. Stand by cool water and say to the white clouds, you are my strength. The power is yours, O heavens. In the beginning was the land. The red man possessed it lovingly. He possessed it with gentleness and humility, with peace. But out of the great sea to the east was destined to come a roaring wave which would destroy that peace, a seething tide of strange men with pale faces and restless hands. Up across the mountains it would burst and spread, a vast hungry tide of pioneers, seeking, grasping, building, and always before it, like dry leaves scattered in the winds of autumn, the red men would flee for their lives. In a highly dramatic scene during Act One, the arrival of Hernando de Soto at a Cherokee village after his men have slain one of the tribe's braves is reenacted. His Indian guide explains that the Spaniards are seeking a land where arrows are tipped with pure gold, where men use turquoise for money, and where children wear coral in their hair. The tribe's chief defiantly flings a few trinkets and strains of metal beads at De Soto's feet. There's a tense silence as De Soto kicks them disgustedly with his toe. Finally, the soldiers are persuaded to leave the village after the chief tells them gold may be found further west. More than 270 years after De Soto's trek through Cherokee country in 1540, a band of 3,000 warriors of the tribe fought at the side of Stonewall Jackson against the British in the War of 1812. They defeated the enemy in a decisive battle in northern Alabama at a place called Horseshoe Bend. Through the Cherokee nation swept a wave of rejoicing. 
Indians and whites gathered in village after village to celebrate the great victory. And in the Great Smokies, the village of Drowning Bear reached far into the primitive past and brought back a dance of triumph so that their white friends might see it, the Great Eagle Dance. is enacted unto these hills. Mr. Harry E. Buchanan, chairman of the Cherokee Historical Association, feels that through the drama, Okinawa Indian Village, the Museum of the Cherokee Indian, and other projects in North Carolina, the association is not only perpetuating the history and traditions of the Cherokee Indian, but is also doing much to raise the living standards of the Cherokee and instill in them a greater appreciation of themselves and their race. Against the backdrop of the towering peaks of the Great Smokies, the past has been brought as close as your next footstep by the Cherokee Historical Association, a nonprofit organization. The village was reproduced by the Sally Institute for Cherokee Indian Research, an association-sponsored technical organization. A visit to this reproduction of primitive culture is without parallel in America, as you have seen on Guided Tours.